This is the Pentagon, Washington, D.C. And this man is Colonel Bill Coleman. He was Chief of Public Information for the United States Air Force from 1969 to 1974. It was here at the Pentagon that the Defense Department first became interested in the UFO phenomenon. This occurred in the late 1940s, with reports about objects and lights seen in the sky by military personnel and others. The Air Force decided to investigate the matter anyway. There was that one possibility that these flying objects could well be foreign weapons used for test purposes and might affect our national security. The investigative branch was called Project Sign. The project had only been underway for about two weeks when the Mantell crash had made headlines across the nation. The staff's investigation was far from complete, but public pressure was enormous. And they were forced to come up with an answer to really quiet growing speculation that Mantell had been killed by hostile aliens and some flying saucer. That's when we decided that Mantell had chased the planet Venus. However, this was an initial finding. The Chills and Whitted case had an impact on the Air Force project. It presented the first close-up account by highly reliable witnesses. The object described led some of the staff to postulate an extraterrestrial theory. And they wrote up an estimate of the situation, which at the time was classified top secret, suggesting that the saucers were from outer space. This theory was rejected by the Air Force Chief of Staff, General Hoyt Vandenberg, and even other Project Science staff members as not having enough proof. So the extraterrestrial visitation idea was dropped for the time being. In a remarkable top secret report to General Hoyt Vandenberg, the Air Force's Chief of Staff, the investigators said the Earth was being visited by alien spaceships. They took it so seriously that they risked their own careers by writing an estimate of the situation that they sent on to higher headquarters and said that UFOs, these, some of these UFOs could be extraterrestrial, which of course was not received well by, uh, by the Pentagon. Hoyt Vandenberg looked at this thing and he said, I cannot accept this. I cannot accept this kind of conclusion because you don't have concrete proof that that's what kind of a device we're dealing with. The eyewitness accounts from experienced pilots were not enough for the general. The Air Force wanted the flying saucer phenomena to go away. But the popular fascination with mysterious flying objects was growing. In 1952, the Air Force received more UFO reports than any other year in history. The sky is the stage, the actors, so-called flying saucers. In July 1952, the Pentagon's communication system was overwhelmed by calls about UFOs. The number of calls of frightened Americans, hysterical Americans, coming into the switchboards of the American government were clogging communication channels. And if American communication channels were clogged, then this would leave America vulnerable to a potential Soviet attack. So the task is calm the Fuhrer, end the hysteria. It was public hysteria, not the flying saucers themselves, that threatened the national security. President Truman ordered the CIA to make recommendations on how the Air Force should handle the UFO problem. The CIA convened a panel headed by the physicist H.P. Robertson. The Robertson panel says we must do something to remove the aura of mystery from the UFO phenomena so that people no longer take them seriously and don't bother to report them. That's what we want. So flying saucers, whatever they were, wherever they came from, were to be made the subject of ridicule. 